In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to record a basic MIDI track and to quantize it. And this is a, a really useful um, exercise you can do as part of the uh, New Zealand Music Technology Unit Standard 27656. So that's a level one music technology unit standard. What we're going to do is we're going to be recording the melody of the jazz standard summertime. And that's useful to us because one, we're going to learn how to record and then also quantize with the swing feel. Because obviously being a jazz piece, it's got a swing feel to it, which is different to a straight feel. So the first thing you need to do is choose the appropriate type of song. We're going to be building virtual instruments. So I'm going to add in the name of the project down here. We're going to call it Summertime. And I'm going to put my name in there as well. It's always good to do that, especially in a school environment, so it's easy to track whose song it was. Otherwise, you can end up with 30 summer times, and it gets a bit hard to track. So we click on this button here, Build Virtual Instruments. And as you can see over here, we've now got a couple of tracks, which are already set up for using with MIDI. The other tracks down here are audio tracks, either for recording voice, guitar, bass, that sort of thing, or if you want to drag and drop loops onto that, we're going to do that in a minute. Okay, so a couple of things I need to set up. I want to have a, a saxophone sound, so I click the button over here, which is the Change Instrument button. brings up this window here with all the options, and there's heaps of different sounds in Mixcraft. But go down to the bottom to Wind Instruments, Saxophone, and I click the Alto Sax button. And that's ready to go. So I can close that window now. Um, another thing we need to check is what is our beats per minute or our tempo for the song. The song we're going to be doing should be 110 beats per minute. This currently says 120. So if I click on that there, double click, OK. And then that brings up this um, marker here, which is basically you can put them throughout the song if you're changing tempo or key signature or time signature. But the initial one, the start one, will set the beginning of the song. So we're going to change this from 120 to 110 beats per minute. If you are doing that but you don't know the exact number, you can use the tap tempo function, which is great. So you literally tap that button a few times and that will give you the correct tempo. This is also where you can change your key signature, your time signature, and setting for how often the metronome will beat. So I click the OK button there. Right, now we've got that done. 110 beats per minute, 4-4, four, four, and C. A couple other things we need to do are check the metronome settings. So you click this button here. I've got mine set so it will click during playback and during recording. Having it clicking during playback is useful so when we've finished recording and we listen back, we can tell if we're really playing in time or not. Now, the other thing about recording MIDI data, it's really important to be able to play in time with the bars, the beats, the metronome, for example. But sometimes that metronome can get a little bit hard to hear or it's not giving us enough information to really stay in time. So in that case, you better to go down to the library down here and find an appropriate drum loop that f matches the style that you're going to be playing in. So down here, I've chosen the Cool Jazz set, and within that, there are a bunch of drums. So if I audition one of these. Okay, so there's a drum track that actually works quite well with what we're going to do. All I do is click and hold that, drag it up to one of these audio tracks, and let go. Now it's asking if I want to change the tempo of the song to 123 beats per minute, which is what that drum loop was originally recorded at. But I can say no, because actually I want the song at 110, and it will automatically time stretch to match my 110 beats per minute. Now I hover over the right hand side of that loop until we get this resize button, and then we can move that out and, and loop it out for enough bars to cover the length of time we're going to be playing. I always like to go considerably further than I actually need for the song, so that I know I'm not going to run out partway through my recording. So, I might turn that down a bit, as you heard that drum loop was relatively loud. So, I'm ready now to start recording. Uh, I'm going to rewind back to the beginning. I need to arm the track that I want to record. So, I click that button. You can see it's turned red now. And now, I'm ready to start recording the summertime melody. So, here we go.
okay and you can use the space bar to um, stop recording it's an easy place to get to now you notice I made some deliberate mistakes there that was so I can show you how we can fix them up once we're done the first thing I do once I've finished recording is to double click this region which will bring it up down here in the editing window and as you can see we're looking at it and the piano roll view there's also the standard notation view down here but the piano roll is the most useful one for this next task we're going to do which is called quantizing so go back to piano roll um, I will normally zoom out so that it's easy to see in detail what's happened in there and the first thing I do is to literally just play the whole piece back from the beginning and listen out for any particular errors so I'm going to do that if you click in the little timeline area here just above the um, editing window you can move the cursor to there and then start playing from there so you can see there was one of my errors um, I'm going to make sure I've got the, the pointer which is the editing tool and then I can click on that note and delete that okay so then I'll carry on and see what else is going on you see that's quite wrong so I click on the note that's what it should have been and this should have gone down to E and then I hit two notes at the same time there so I can click the the one I didn't want and hit delete and I think that should be better now I'll play it from back here okay so that's basically cleaned up any of the obvious errors now what we need to do is make the timing a little bit more accurate none of us can play perfectly in time with the beat or with the backing drum track so there's a great function in Mixcraft and, and virtual sequences like this called quantize what that does is it aligns the notes to the nearest beat or division of the beat that we specify so if I select all of the notes now by going control A and click on this MIDI editing button and choosing quantize I can now say how do I want it to be realigned or quantized um, eighth notes is a really good starting point because this is a swing piece I've turned on this swing button here and 25% is quite a good amount so I'm going to now do that and you watch the notes they will move very slightly okay so they are now more accurate and what's great is that they're actually doing that with a swing feel I'll play a little bit so you can see what's going on okay so that's it with a swing feel just while we're here I'll show you what would happen if we did it with a not swung eighth note feel so I'll do that now you see they've all shifted and it's going to sound rather robotic here we go so there's still a little bit of the feel from the way that I played it but nevertheless it hasn't really got that right jazz swing feel so that's why we want to use swing and you can adjust how much swing you've got maybe even if I give it up 30 35 percent it might actually give it a little bit more of a uh, heavier swing feel so there we go that's the basic process that you need to do to uh, create a sequence that's got a good jazz feel and it's quantized and that's going to be uh, part of the uh, 27656 unit standard in music technology